start off with your Owls. Can you tell me about them? What, what, what are the expectations for the season? What, is it, what has it been like at FAU? Well, our, our expectations, hang on. Do you want me to look at the camera? Oh, yeah, you, 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 yeah. uh, well, the, the expectations are never going to change. We, we're not going to shy away from the word championship ever. Uh, and our expectations are to be competing for the American Conference title in late November and early December. And uh, that, that will always be uh, our expectations. And, and you asked about the team. I, I think we've, we've got some talented players. We've got a 1,000-yard tailback. We've got arguably the best wide receiver from Conference USA in LeJonte Wester coming back. We've got first-team All-Conference USA nose guard and Evan Anderson, who's here, coming back. Our right tackle, Chaz Neal, who's here. If he plays like we think he can and, and stays healthy, will be probably a mid to mid-round draft pick. You know, so we, we've got some talent, uh, talented players. And having been in this conference uh, and and seen what it takes from a talent standpoint uh, to compete week in and week out, I, I think we're there. Uh, we, we've got to address some concerns at inside linebacker, and we got to settle on a quarterback. But uh, all of the other positions. Uh, I'm really excited to see what they can do in the fall. And coach, does this feel at all about your time with the Houston Cougars? Does it? Does it? Does it? Do you take anything from that situation bringing over to? Oh, it feels eerily similar. Yeah, we've got a bunch of two-star, no-star dudes that their whole life have been told they're an inch too short, a tenth of a second too slow, 20 pounds too light, what, whatever it is, and they've been under-recruited, under-appreciated. Uh, chip on their shoulder, and, and I like to always use the word rugged. They're just rugged dudes, man. Rugged, rugged dudes. And if, if you earn their trust, which I believe we have, and, and I hope to, to keep that trust, then they'll run through a brick wall for you. And they enjoy being coached hard. They like being coached hard. They, 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 they want to grind um, because they want to show the world, like, y'all missed. Y'all missed on me. You know, and uh, but it can't that can be an internal uh, personal motivation. But if that's your only motivation, then we're we're going to be five and seven again. The motivation has to be. You know, you, you genuinely not just because coach told you to, but genuinely in your heart of hearts, you're happier when your buddy scores a touchdown than when you do. When your buddy gets a sack than when you do. When your buddy makes a tackle than when you do. If you if, if we can foster and create and, and cultivate that culture um, of, of true, genuine love and appreciation for the guy next to you, look out. Look out. And Coach, this conference, what do you make of the realignment? And is the AAC the, one of the most up-and-coming conferences in, in college football? I would say we're already there. Um, you know, I think the stat is, what, in the last 10 years, eight New Year's Six games, and we've won six of them. You know, um, so I, I don't know. I mean, we were at Houston. We beat number three Oklahoma with Baker Mayfield, Samaj P. Ryan, Hollywood Brown, C.D. Lamb. I promise you, uh, Bob Stoops wouldn't have traded rosters with me that day. We beat number three Louisville when Lamar, the year Lamar won the Heisman Trophy. I think the score was like 38 to 10 or something like that. We beat number eight Florida State with Dalvin Cook, Derwin James, Jalen Ramsey, which, by the way, if you had to design in a laboratory a corner, Go, go look at Jalen Ramsey. He's what they're supposed to look like. And they were number eight in the country. And so, and Jimbo wouldn't have traded rosters with me. And so, I don't know. I mean, what, what more does this conference have to do to, to, to show that we belong? You know, to, to go a two-year run at the University of Houston where we didn't lose to a quote-unquote Power 5 team, 5-0, five and oh, including one of those wins being a New Year's Six game. And then Luke and what they did and going to the playoffs and – uh, you know, Willie and what they did last, just last year, just last year, they beat USC in the damn Cotton Bowl, you know, and won 12 games or 13 games or whatever it was. Like, I, I, you say up and coming, I, I say arrived. Uh, now, let's call it what it is, you know, and I can say this because I was part of it. Commissioner Resco probably doesn't like me using this phrase, but the three big boys are leaving, right? Um, and we feel like we've got six really good programs from Conference USA coming in. Uh, but the parity, especially from a talent standpoint, um, is going to be remarkable. I don't know that there's a conference in the country that 
if you measured their talent, and that, which I don't know how to do, I don't work for 247 or Rivals or whatever, but if you measured their talent from the most talented team to the least, the gap of 14 has got to be less than any other conference in the country. So each and every week, we know we're going to battle. And does seeing Cincinnati, you know, make the playoff as well? Does that should show it's possible? Yeah, and it's, it's even more possible, uh, you know, moving forward, not this year, but uh, when we do go to the 12-team f- uh, format, you know, as, as Commissioner Oresco said, they're going to take the top six uh, conference championships, top-ranked uh, conference champions, and that's six. And so somebody, the American Conference champ, the Sun Belt champ, the MAC champ, the Mountain West champ, or the Conference USA champ is going to the playoffs. And, you know, we, we understand that, um, you know, in order to do that, though, first, you got to win the conference. And um, so that's going to be our goal, and, and uh, we'll, we'll worry about the playoffs when they expand. I mean, we went 13-1 and one at, at Houston with our one loss being with our starting quarterback out and finished eighth in the country and didn't even sniff the playoffs that year and, and beat number eight Florida State by double digits. And, and couldn't sniff the playoffs that year. And uh, thank God Luke did what, what he did, and, and they went undefeated. I mean, it, had they stubbed their toe and lost one game, they wouldn't have gone. And now you, you can't say that anymore. Moving forward, when they go to the 12-team format, you can't say that anymore. Sure. And, Coach, i got to ask you about one of your top recruits, B. John Robinson. How happy are you for him uh, going out to the Atlanta Falcons and, and uh, watching him on Sundays? Uh, I mean... Bijan could have gone to Bemidji State, and he'd wind up playing in the NFL. Like, and we, uh, Bijan and his family are better human beings than he is a football player, and he was the eighth pick in the draft. That should tell you something. They're remarkable, remarkable people. Um, kind, gentle, God-loving, God-fearing people um, that, you know, were – my wife and I are still in a group chat with him and his grandma and mom, and we send Bible verses every day uh, during the week. And so uh, I can't say enough about, and I know you probably wanted me to tell you how fast and how good he is on the field, but um, <laughs> that speaks for itself. But what people don't realize is what an unbelievable human being he is and the people that he has as his support system are as good a people as I've been around as well. Coach, what as well, a uh, last one for you. Just from t- coming from Texas as well, what will you take most with you over to the Alps? Uh, just your experience. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm coming from CBS Sports, not, not from Texas. I mean, right, that, that right. feels like it was a lifetime ago. But uh, I, I think, you know, we're not going to walk around hanging our head. We're, we're proud of our race. Still not up to our standard, but what we've done uh, with me as a head coach uh, we're proud of, you know, uh, we've got work to do and, and we, we want to win them all, trust me. But, um, you know, we're, we're not going to walk around like with our head hanging down in shame for the record that we had. Um, but I, I think probably the biggest takeaway or two biggest takeaways are one, you know, I think I try to fight the man a lot less. I'm, I'm a little bit more diplomatic. Now, I, do I wish things we're more, more urgent, especially at a place like, like Florida Atlantic that, you know, basketball was, you know, our final four run was really their first foray into, you know, big time nationally elite athletics. And so there's a learning curve there on their end as well. But I'm, I'm trying to be a lot more diplomatic and understand that um, you can't just wave a magic wand and, and get things done. Uh, and then probably, you know, our expectations, our standards, our level of accountability, our toughness, our physicality, none of those things are ever going to change. But I think you realize this generation, the delivery may need to be a little bit uh, a little bit different. And we understand that. But like every year, um, I like to use the word evolve. You know, I hope every coach in this building is evolving every year and learning and adapting and, and changing things and growing as a coach. So, um, Irrespective of my time anywhere, I'd like to think that you know you you self-evaluate every off-season and 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 try to make improvements. 
Coach, I really appreciate the time. Best of luck this season, all right? All right? Thank you. Thank you.